What's up? Good morning, everybody. Everybody. So I try to keep my things where I am uh, starting immediately. You know. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it is a wonderful, wonderful Monday. Uh, you gotta love a Monday, don't you? I mean, I can do a lot of things to you. I mean, I love you. Thank you. Oh, man, today. We're gonna talk about the pulpit. Uh, I don't know. You guys have a... You know, there's a conspiracy theory for the pulpit. And then there's just the normal, you know, pull chip. Um, so wouldn't it be weird to have your compass out and south is north, north is south? Uh, well, that's some of what we're going to be talking about. Then the other part. That's right. The Adam and Eve theory. See how I did that? <laughs> I'm just kidding. And you have the Adam and Eve theory. Yeah, no, I don't really like to dive into the uh, conspiracy theory world, but man, I just can't help it. Just can't help myself. I just can't help. I'm such a good fucking singer. All right, I'm sorry. Uh, so, <clears throat> moving forward, um, um, I, uh, I, uh, I, wait, there's a Wookiee. Where? I have my own Wookiee. A Wookiee? Yeah. That is, oh, I don't know, that was Lincoln saying hi to everybody, uh, as you can tell, he's got a little bit of a burpee, but, uh, we, you know, that's just, oh, yeah, yeah, well, I got mad at him because he hit the house with the, with our Star Cruiser, and so he got mad, and we got mad, it was a heated moment, there was nothing anybody could do, we took our boxing gloves off, we went out, it's it was okay. It's got to be the rough and toughest dog that I've ever seen. Ever. Ever. So scary. Anyway, so everybody, go get your Red Bulls. Go get your coffee. Do everything you need to do to wake up. Are we are rendezvous back here in... Just, yeah, lab day. Get your coffee. I'll be all right back. Unless the people kind of join in.
Ho oh, tick, what's up? All right, anyway, all right. what's up, guys? I hope everybody is having a wonderful morning. Mondays are fun. Oh, my God. I'm not going to get into it. It's up. Uh, Anyway, uh, so man, we all always hear about pole shifts in the you know world of uh, astronomy, where the South Pole and the North Pole switch. It's uh, we are going to learn about it, but hmm, let's see. I'm going to do first. We're going to start out with the flip flop. Why variations in Earth's magnetic field? aren't causing today's climate change. Those motherfuckers. I'm just kidding. Earth is, is surrounded by an immense magnetic field, as we know, called the magnetosphere. A generated by power, dynamic forces at the center of our world are, magnet, are magnetosphere shields. Um, they shield us from erosion of our atmosphere, by, by the solar winds, uh, particular radiation from coronal, you know, mass ejections, which are eruptions of large clouds of energetic, you know, mag, mag, magnetized plasma from the sun's corona into space, which if it doesn't have anywhere to go in space, eventually it's going to nail us. That's how we have gold in our, and all these different elements are from stars exploding. Uh, even from billions of light years, and man, eventually they're going to get to if, our, if Earth is in its way. Many stars as there are, and that co- that covers our uh, our planet. That's where man, billions of years of that, and that's where you get gold, silver, magnesium, all these different elements that we find. Everything on Earth is, is comes from a star, even us. Not the sun, all you know, stupid, whatever, but okay. hippie like, but. Yeah, uh, man, it's it's crazy. It's really crazy. So anyway, um, our magnetosphere it plays a role of ga- of the gatekeeper, propelling these forms of energy that are harmful, you know, to life or to anything on Earth that's used to, you know, it, this atmosphere, trapping most of us it's safely away um, from Earth's surface. You can learn uh, more about this. Um, um, you know, looking up Earth's magnetosphere, which I will do an episode on to get more, to help you understand that more as well. Uh, if there's anything on here that you guys ever want to hear, man, just throw it, man, put it in the comments, because I, 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 you know, I, I uh, that, that's mostly my favorite thing is to do, you know, what you guys, you know, what you guys want to hear. Now, so the forces that generate our magnetic field are constantly changing. The field itself is also in continual flux. It's got a strength waxing and 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 wa- wa- you know waning, waning, waning over time. This causes uh, the location of Earth's magnetic pole and South Pole to gradually shift, and even the com- completely flip locations every three hundred thousand years or so. Which is that take that with a grain of you know, <laughs> but that might be somewhat important if. If you use a compass, or for certain animals like birds, fish, sea turtles, uh, who internal compasses use the magnetic field to navigate. 
you know, birds use uh, the magnet and the mag to that's how you see them flying. So, um, like in big, big, well, it'd be like schools of birds, <laughs> like fish would be, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I mean, flocks of birds, I guess. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Maybe the gummy. I didn't mean to. Anyway, don't listen to that. So, since the forces that generate them and, uh, are constantly changing, I'm going to read this chart. <laughs> the sun unleashed a series of our four colonial mass ejection, <laughs> ejections. CMEs in the, yeah, layman term. On May 22nd, 24, 2010, as the stereo ahead spacecraft Watch the action in the cornograph uh, images. It was cool. You can still see it on uh, you can get on YouTube and check it out. The sun, blocked out by an occulting disk, seen as red, uh, is represented by a white disk that showed the relative size CMEs and large storms. Pretty cool. Um, some people have claimed that variations in Earth's magnetic field are contributing to current global warming and can use catastrophic climate change. However, the science doesn't support that argument. And, uh, well, the, well, we'll be examining a number of proposed uh, hypotheses regarding the effects of, of changes in Earth's uh, magnetic field on climate. That's another, that's a whole other subject that has everything to do with it. But, God, that could be a whole episode in itself as well. Um, We'll also discuss physics-based uh, reasons why changes in the magnetic field can impact climate. And that'll be a good one, too. Um, based on da data from Swarm, the top, uh, the top, uh, I guess, uh, what would they be? Mass ejections from, are usually they, they, from the equators part. But, uh, yeah, um, well, if you want to get NASA's climate change news, you can uh, subscribe to this newsletter. I'll post that because that's uh, man, that's pretty cool. I mean, but I think that's a um, so on this we have number one shifts in magnetic pole location. The position of Earth's magnetic north pole was first precisely located in 1831. Since then. Is gradually drifted north northwest by more than 600 miles, 1,000 kilometers, in other words, and its forward speed has increased from about 10 miles, 16 kilometers per year, to about 34 miles per year. That's pretty crazy. Uh, so the gradual shift impacts navigate, uh, navigation. It must. Uh, it is regularly accounted for. However. You know, it's like anything with the science world. There's little science evidence of any significant link between Earth's drifting magnetic poles and climate. Uh, but number two is the magnetic pole reversal. And again, this sort of is what gets you, the, you know, the the uh, the whole ring and the conspiracy. Well, we're going to get to the Adam and Eve. That's going to be cool. So during a pole reversal, Earth's magnetic north and south poles swap locations. While that may sound like a big deal, pole reversals are common in Earth's ge geological history. Uh, one big reason is really, honestly, what is up and what is down in space. Honestly, what is it that, 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 that there is no north, south, east, west, whatever. It, it, space is you, <laughs> you kind of lose that uh that 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 plane of existence, and when you uh, get into space, that that that's all uh, relative to uh, anything. Um, but people don't, you know, it's something you don't think about, but it's true. Uh, now, while they may sound like a big deal, pole reversals are common in Earth's geological history. Uh, paleomagnetic uh, records tell us Earth's magnetic poles have reversed 183 times in the last 83 million years and at least several hundred times in the past 106 million years well still not shit to two billion <laughs> anyway um the time intervals between reversals have fluctuated widely but average about uh 300,000 years 
with the last one taking place about 780,000 years ago. Uh, during a pull reversal, the magnetic field weakens, but it doesn't completely disappear. The magnetic field together, the Earth's atmosphere, continue protecting Earth from cosmic rays and charged solar particles. Uh, though, you know, they are a small amount of particles, radiation that, that makes it down to Earth's surface, you know. Uh, it's still, you know, the, the magnetic field becomes jumbled and the multiple magnet, magnetic poles can emerge in, in unexpected places as well. And so you're still getting showered by all the particles. Uh, but no one knows exactly when the next pole reversal might be. But scientists know, oh, they don't happen overnight. They take place over hundreds to thousands of years, which would be another reason. You know, anything gradual, is, that's pretty much how the universe works. Anything quick and bad, anything gradual is what you can make it that long. No one knows exactly when the next pole reversal might occur, but in the past 200 years, Earth's magnetic field has weakened about 9% on global average. Some people cite this uh, as evidence of a pole reversal uh, being imminent. But scientists have no reason to believe so. Um, in fact, paleomagnetic studies have shown that the field is about as strong as it's been in the past 100,000 years. And it's twice as intense as its million year average. <laughs> so, you, you, you never know. Nobody can really say. While some scientists estimate the magnetic field strength might completely decay in about a, a th 1,300 years, the current weakening spot stop at any time but plant and animal fossils from the period um, last major pole reversals they don't show any big changes deep ocean sediment samples indicate glacial activity was was stable uh, in fact the geological and fossil records from previous reversals uh, show nothing remarkable so it's such as doomsday events or major extinction there's nothing really there now getting into the uh, kind of the conspiracy Adam and Eve theory. Now this one, this one's going to be fun. This one's going to be a lot of fun, actually. So, don't go anywhere. Uh, I will be right back. This is, uh, this is going to be awesome, actually. So definitely don't go anywhere. Um, I've got a short, short break. And, uh, we'll, we'll get back to this. And, uh, this is going to be fun. years ago, when the Earth formed, there was no moon. Our planet was a hostile molten ball of rock traveling around the sun. The young solar system was a chaotic place with crowded orbits and frequent collisions. Today, the Earth orbits in an astronomical highway that is mainly clear of debris, which is good if you're traveling at 30 kilometers per second. A cleared orbit is one of the three definitions that the International Astronomical Union uses to classify a planet. To clear its orbit, the Earth had to go through a violent period of collisions and near misses, as smaller bodies were either thrown out of the orbit or added to the mass of the planet itself in collisions. Not all of the objects the Earth encountered as a young planet were small. It's thought that there were dozens of protoplanets orbiting the Earth in those days, swirling around in crowded orbits, and Earth would have experienced a number of significant collisions. Direct evidence of these planetary collisions has long been erased from Earth's surface, but one particular collision left an indelible mark. The giant impact hypothesis suggests that there was a glancing collision between the newly formed Earth and a Mars-sized planet around 4.5 billion years ago, resulting in a planetary merger. The colliding planet has been named Theia, after the Greek goddess who gave birth to Selene, the goddess of the moon. Scientists love their Greek mythology, 
and there's a good reason for the choice of goddess in this case. Computer simulations suggest that the collision resulted in large amounts of material from both Theia and Earth entering orbit around the battered larger planet. And over time, the debris combined under the action of gravity to form the moon. The supporting evidence for this hypothesis is strong, although, as always in science, healthy skepticism remains. Without skepticism, there can be no progress. Computer simulations certainly match the details of the spins and orbit of the Earth-Moon system. But there's also physical evidence of a common origin for the system from the lunar rock samples returned by the Apollo astronauts. In particular, the abundances of oxygen isotopes 16O, 17O and 18O in lunar rocks are near identical to those on Earth. For those who need a bit of chemistry revision, isotopes are atoms of the same chemical element but which have different numbers of neutrons in the nucleus. The most plausible reason for this similarity is that the rocks have a common origin, namely in the collision 4.5 billion years ago. The moon also has significantly less iron in its core than Earth. This is also consistent with the computer models describing such an impact. To get the spins and orbit right, a glancing collision is required, and in such collisions the iron-rich cores of the colliding planets tend to merge together, leaving the iron-depleted rocks from the outer layers to form the moon. The giant impact hypothesis is able to explain the composition of the Earth and moon, and the details of their orbits and spins. This includes the origin of Earth's tilted spin axis, angled at 23.5 degrees to the plane of the solar system, which gives us our seasons. I find this a wonderful thing. There are few certainties in science, but I would contend that we wouldn't be here today if our spin axis wasn't tilted. The moon was likely formed in the event that tilted our spin axis, but in any case, her presence acts to stabilize the orientation of Earth's axis, and a reasonable level of stability over geological timescales is a prerequisite for the evolution of complex life. Humans wouldn't be here without the moon. Well, at the very least, evolution would have taken a different path, and it is a major understatement to say that the road to humanity was convoluted. In one sense, that's a superficial observation. There are a vast number of chance events in our past that could have happened differently, and changing any one of them would have meant that we wouldn't be here. We shouldn't fall into the trap of attaching particular importance to a single event. We'll leave that to the sonorous voiceovers of badly made television documentaries. The deeper, unarguable point, which does bear at least a thought, is that we are very lucky indeed to be here. There cannot be any cosmic significance to our existence because our existence is far too contingent on a series of chance events stretching back to the formation of the solar system and beyond. Does the fact that you're lucky to be alive make you feel irrelevant or valuable? I'll leave that to you. In his essay, Some Thoughts on the Common Toad, George Orwell reflects on the simple and available delight of noticing things like the passage of the seasons. And that's really what this book is about. The point is that the pleasures of spring are available to everyone and cost nothing, he writes. How many a time have I stood watching the toads mating or a pair of hares having a boxing match in the young corn and thought of all the important persons who would stop me enjoying this if they could. But luckily they can't. The atom bombs are piling up in the factories the police are prowling through the cities. The lies are streaming from the loudspeakers. But the earth is still going around the sun. And neither the dictators nor the bureaucrats, deeply as they disapprove of the process, are able to prevent it. You don't need permission to do science, to think carefully and without preconception about what nature is telling you. After all, nature is a more reliable guide to the truth than the opinions of those incalculably lucky humans. The passage of the seasons is a gentle reminder that we live on a planet in orbit around the sun. Although we're moving at close to 30 kilometers per second in orbit,
What's up, everybody? So, and so, we're getting into. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't get scary, man, yeah? Alright, man. So, the Adam and Eve theory. Okay. Catastrophe as Earth's magnetic poles reverse. Alright, man. Now, who here has uh, heard this one? Please hit like um, if you like the show, if you've learned, if, if, if you're enjoying my show. Um, please hit like, please comment, please share. Uh, it helps out so much. It's actually the only thing that will show that I can, uh, that um, shows progression. Um, I'll definitely, if there's anything that you, uh, you know, if you have a channel, I'll definitely want to check it out and share yours as well. But definitely. Please hit like and um, all that fun stuff. What helps? Um, so getting into the Adam and Eve. Wait, let me get to you. I need to. I kind of need to cut it. Sorry about that. Okay. So, the Adam and Eve theory. Um, Adam and Eve theory is gaining momentum all over TikTok, I guess, according to which every 6,500 years, a disaster on the scale of biblical flood strikes the earth. Is it true, my friends? Is it true? Well, we ain't going to find out. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll just shut up. The Garden of Eden, of, of Eden with the fall of, of man by Jan Brew, Tumpton the Elder, and the Peter Paul Rubens circa 1615 is a very, very pictorial picture of the Adam and Eve naked people. Now, the conspiracy theory known as Adam and Eve theory has recently resurfaced on TikTok following its appearance on Joe Rogan's podcast. You mother... I'm just kidding. <coughs> Me and Joe Rogan, man, we're a long time from... Yeah, I just went over to his house the other day. Man, yeah, shit. We're first to name basis. Uh, it claims that every... It claims that every six of a major disaster occurs on Earth. However, it's established from the outset that this theory is false and unfounded, despite its considerable following. It was lying. Joe Rogan's podcast recently sparked a series of, well, I don't know, viral TikTok videos promoting this outlandish climate change theory. It was initially outlined in a book that also proposed Jesus lived in, in, in India for, for 18 years and was abducted by aliens after his crucifixion. Raising concerns about its credibility. Yeah, that's stupid because he was an alien. Okay, the episode of the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, which aired on... <laughs> I love doing I do. I love doing this. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. 
it was initially outlined in a book that also proposed Jesus lived in India for 18 years and was abducted by a, he was an alien to him. I'm just kidding there. The episode of Joe Rogan Experience Podcast, which aired January 18th, featured an interview with YouTuber and self-proclaimed researcher, Jimmy Corsetti. During the conversation, Rogan introduced the Adam and Eve theory, an idea lacking evidence and originating from the Adam and Eve story of a book published in 1965 by Chan Thomas, an electrical engineer who claimed to possess psychic abilities. How the fuck could you not go wrong there? Just kidding. Now, Thomas, formerly associated with the Air, with the U.S. Air Force, um, argued in his book, partially published by the CIA in 2013, which that sounds weird to me, that that the Earth's magnetic poles flip 90 degrees every few thousand years. Not 180. Oh, yeah. Fine. I'm the dumb one. Okay. According to Thomas, these poles shift will result in apocalyptic weather events. He claimed that the first flood occurred during the time of Adam and Eve, the second during the story of Noah's Ark, and a third catastrophic event is impending, my friends. Although these conspiracy theories hadn't previously garnered in, uh, minimal attention, it gained traction in, on Rogan's popular podcast in January. Um, Rogan questioned Corsetti, um, host of Bright Insight, about the, va the validity of the theory, asking, could there be a situation where the magnetic poles really change? Corsetti responded by <laughs> asserting that the theory was scientifically proven transferring to Thomas's work. Corsetti <laughs> elaborated on the idea, arguing that the reversal of the uh, magnetic poles would cause the Earth to essentially stand still, leading to unprecedented overheating. He also mentioned that the wind and water would maintain their momentum as winds and the equator move at the speeds of approximately 1,609 kilometers per hour. According to the theory, the cataclysmic event would result in extreme weather phenomena, including tsunamis. Pusetti <laughs> specified that the reversal occurs in cycles of 6,500 years, with a 90-degree flip followed by corrections around the seventh day. Now, so basically... We're spinning at 6,000 or 1,609 kilometers an hour. We're hauling ass, right? Well, basically, the flip would stop all the land masses from moving, and the wind, the atmosphere would just still fucking just, yeah, it would be, that would be fucked up. Um, yeah. Uh, but anyway, the seventh day thing reminds me of, you know, some biblical stuff. Now, Ro Rogan remarked, it's not to say that we aren't polluting, uh, we certainly are, and it's not to say that we shouldn't improve, we certainly should, but if the fucking magnetic poles might shift and we might get hit by a gigant giant rock from space, we might have bigger problems. If we're going to be con concentrating on nonsense, which is really par for the... For the course of, you know, with human beings, obviously, we're going to be concentrating on these things we're really not going to fix over the short term. When something might happen, that makes all of it a moot point. <laughs> I just heard moot the other day and laughed about that word. However, experts category, uh, uh, categorically just, uh, refute these claims labeling them basically the lacking scientific support. Media Matters for America, a nonprofit organization, reported that the theory and, con and excerpts from the interview accumulated over 20 million years from TikTok within six months uh, without addressing its fallacious nature, which TikTok, of course, it's... You know, the, the, I saw this thing, this flat earth at the time. <laughs> Well, he was talking about a, an airplane, and he, I guess the blueprints and all that stuff, it's, man, I, it, 
You know what? If we fuck, we probably live on a flat Earth. You know what? I'm just gonna shut up. Actually, that's not true. When me and Lincoln were out on our star cruiser, which a million times we saw how around the goddamn Earth was. So shut up, flat Earthers. God damn it, man. Why make shit? St- I'm sorry. Never mind. Okay. I apologize. Please don't. Probably, probably lose all my. Okay. I was just kidding you. Martin Malintovich, Keck. <laughs> I'm not kidding, Keck. Okay. A senior research scientist at the NASA Research Center just made the theory telling The Verge, this is total bogus. If that's what happens every 6,500 years, we would certainly see it. It would be in all the records. The amount of energy to bring about this is tremendous. And you know there's nothing to in, uh, initiate it. The blog post on NASA's website also affirms this standpoint, stating, There's no evidence that Earth's climate has been significantly impacted by the last three magnetic field excursions, nor by the excursion event within the last 2.8 million years. The fossil records similarly do not demonstrate the significant poles reversals triggered major upheavals, particularly not catastrophic events like the biblical flood. You liars. <laughs> so what can we expect uh, and when? Magnetic pole flips and global apocalypses. What does the science really say? Boy, this is going to be a good one. Um, am I at a... Nope, I'm not. We can, uh, we're going to keep on going, my friend. All right. The TikTok videos give the impression that this change will occur swiftly. However, scientists disagree. According to NASA, Earth's magnetic poles have flipped 183 times in the past 83 million years and several hundred times in the past 160 million years. The timing of the next reversal remains uncertain, but it it takes 100,000 years rather than overnight. Scientists currently have no reason to believe that the sudden pole reversal is imminent. While the Earth's magnetic poles do change, with the magnetic pole and south poles uh, shifting over time, these alterations transpire gradually. Magnetic pole reversals do occur approximately once every 200,000 to 300,000 years. I I love that shit. Approximately 200,000 to 300,000 years. There's nothing approximate about that. I'm just, you know... Okay, all right. Uh, but the last reversal likely transpired around eight hundred thousand years. I thought it was approximately two hundred thousand to three. Yeah, I'll just okay. NASA explains because the forces that generate Earth's magnetic field. I think because it has better news than this. I'm kidding. Don't please. Because the forces that generate Earth's magnetic field (laughs) are constantly changing the field itself. And (laughs) 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 oh my hand! I wish there was video. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Losers, no, my God, I'm not. Okay, this causes the location of Earth's magnetic north and south pole to gradually shift and completely flip locations around every 300,000 years or so. God damn it, really make up your mind, sir. Uh, for a planetary turnover to occur, certain uh, physical factors must come into play. Currently, the Earth's upper atmosphere lacks the necessary energy for the such an event. Furthermore, the air does not contain iron, and therefore, there is no known physical mechanism connecting weather conditions to Earth to electromagnetic uh, currents in space. So put that in your pipe and smoke it, mother... Uh, Electromagnetic interactions solely impact the Earth's ionosphere, which begins at an altitude of sitting to 60 to 90 kilometers above the Earth's atmosphere or surface and extends over 500 kilometers. They do not influence the weather and climate patterns on the surface. How do you... I'm just joking. <laughs> I, I, you know, that annoying... I, I'm not him. 2014 report by Berkeley News stated that even 
if magnetic fields were to change throughout a person's lifetime, it would not result in a major disaster or damage to power grids. So, again, just kidding. It would not result in a major disaster. Okay, such and such and that type of that thing in such a scenario. <laughs> the weekend, Lincoln, I really need your help. The weakened mag magnetic field could potentially increase the risk of solar flares, disrupting electrical infrastructure, power grids, and satellites. However, a previously mentioned fossil evidence does not indicate any significant ex extin extinction uh, the events caused by the pore versus. Nor does the geological record reflect an increase in volcanic eruptions or and or earthquakes. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. Media Matters remarked, while it, it was not written to provide an uh, alternative, uh, an, al an alternative, altern God, shut up, Joey, explanation for climate change. The Adam and Eve story provides a framework for the interpreting uh, and its effects outside of an anthropologic project, anthropogenic, uh, that's what I said. That's my anthropogenic explanation. This narrative, which shifts blame away from our fossil fuel economy onto planetary forces beyond human control, can serve as climate misinformation. Uh, the organization emphasized in the past, uh, the Earth's orbit, the sun, the cosmic rays have all similarly been used to provide alternative explanations for climate change. They added... So, there is an overwhelming scientist uh, consensus that added, um, no, the climate, change is, uh, the, the climate change is caused by burning fossil fuels. You son of, that, God, I've been telling you, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> the only way to avert increasing social, political, and ecological effects climate change is by transitioning away from fossil fuel companies well there you go there you have it my friends so i see the flaws i honestly do honestly uh you know i just i just I, as much as sometimes i wish it would happen uh i don't think anything's really gonna change that much I'm pretty sure we're just going to keep living our millions of lives. No uh, comets or asteroids hitting Earth, wiping us out. Watch, man. It's just going to happen in like two hours now. I should shut the f <laughs> Well, all right, everybody. I uh, had a blast today. Um, definitely join me on uh, tomorrow. I'll be around. Uh, Man, become a patron. I've got these awesome podcasts coming out, but you've got to be a patron to listen to them. But uh, they're super awesome. Uh, I spent a whole, whole lot of time on them. Uh, they're a lot of fun, though. I love doing them. Uh, so check them out. And, uh, man, if you guys have questions, if you have anything, please, please, please uh, leave comments. Um, I love talking. I love, uh, you know, I'll talk to you guys even through emails or anything, man. I love... Uh, I'd love talking to all you guys. So, no questions, definitely. Well, so cool, everybody. Uh, everybody have a wonderful day. You know, all the good stuff and all the stuff, stuff, stuff. Um, yeah, I got this. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's going to be awesome. I've got a birthday package to send right now that I have laid on. I'm going to continue that show today. Everybody, you guys, have a good day. Don't let anything scare you too much. And the Adam and Eve theory, man, if it's true, let's all go down together, man. But hey, be friends and be nice to everybody. You guys have a wonderful day. I will talk to you soon.